Hello, this is a video about clipping. Clipping, in a nutshell, is what happens when you push a digital signal past 0 dB full scale. So for example, if we take this wave here, we can zoom in, it's peaking up close to 0, this is the peak level of the signal here. As we push the level up, once you get past a certain point, the top of that wave is clipped off. It's just shaved straight off, and this flat topping of the signal here is called clipping. And if you do it by mistake, digital clipping like this is definitely a fault. It's an error. It's going to introduce distortion into your signal, as we'll see in a minute. And it's going to cause all kinds of problems with the playback of your signal. So don't do this by mistake. If you find the output of your door is peaking up above zero and you're not doing that deliberately, you need to fix that problem. But it's also something that can be used as a creative effect and as a way of lifting the level of a digital signal. So we're going to look into it in a little bit more detail. This is what's called straight digital clipping, hard digital clipping, but there are other kinds of clipping, and I want to show those to you, show you what they sound like and what they might look like, so you can watch out for them when you're making your music and either avoid them or use them creatively, if that's what you want to do. So here's an example, and I'll just play this to you clean first. And now I'm going to play you this same wave with 9 dBs of gain before and then a cut of 9 dBs of gain. So you're getting something like 5 or 6 dBs clipping on the wave. And I'm going to play that to you and I switch it in and out so you can hear the effect and the difference in the sound. So here it is clean. There it is with clipping. We can see how that's going to change the shape of the wave if we apply it. There you go. You can see it's chopped all of the peaks off the waveform. The waveform has been clipped, and that's hard digital clipping. But clipping isn't something that was invented with digital. It was perfectly possible to clip analog gear as well. And there are lots of digital emulations of analog clipping around. So, as a different example, I'm going to change the way that that clipping works. I'm using T-Rex Classic Clipper for this initial demonstration. And you can see here that it has a slope control, where you can change the shape of the clipping characteristics. So basically, here's the hard corner, the hard-edged digital clipping. The default setting is to have this value set to 6. And I'll play that, and I'll alternate between the two so you can hear the difference in the sound. So this is the digital hard clipping. And that's the smoother, more analog style clipping. And if I show you how that changes the wave, you can see again it's chopped all the tops off the peaks because that's what clipping does, but it's done it in a much smoother way. And instead of those hard, flat tops, you have more complex, distorted waveforms. But you probably heard that. It sounded slightly smoother. And the reason for that is that the harder you clip a sine wave kind of signal, like the one that we have here, the closer it gets towards being a square wave. And if you've ever played around with making your own sounds using FM synthesis, you'll know that a square wave is a very harsh, grainy, gritty sound because it's full of high harmonics. It's full of square corners like the ones you see here where the wave is clipped off. Whereas if you use a smoother, more analog style clipping like this one, I wouldn't necessarily say that the wave looks smoother, although in some cases it does, but it certainly sounds smoother. It sounds less harsh. Let's just listen to that. So here is the analog clipping style. And 
and there's the sound of digital clipping with that beat. I have another example here. Let's listen to it with clean first. Now I say clean, there's a lot of distortion in the kick sound on there anyway, but we're still going to be able to hear the effects of clipping uh, when we use this quite extreme setting that I have here. Just to give you an idea of the flavour of these sounds, you get milder versions of them with less gain, obviously. So here's the digital clipping. Clean. Digital. And then we make the softer, more analogue style clipping. of that kind of really gritty harsh distortion from the digital and that kind of almost like speaker pushed beyond its limits sound that the digital distortion has but also a bit of a softer warmer sound so if you're considering using clipping you need to decide which one of these is the effect that you want which one you like the sound of and if you find that you're clipping your signal by accident, if you're driving the output of your digital audio workstation too hard and you're accidentally clipping it off, maybe that'll help you recognize the sounds of those kind of distortions. Another comparison I want to do for you is the difference between these kinds of distortion and limiting, which is often given as a better way of controlling the peak level of a signal. Personally, I like to use a combination of clipping and limiting sometimes depending on what the signal is if i'm using limiting or clipping in mastering i would never use it this aggressively i'd never clip or limit a signal to this extent but if you're making sounds if you're doing sound design or you're doing something creative as part of a piece of music especially if it's you know hip-hop or electronica or something then these might be sounds that, that you want to go for let me play you that comparison between clipping and limiting so Actually, I'm going to bring in a third ingredient here, which is the Slate FGX processor, which lots of people are using more and more on their mastering and their mix bus to try and lift the level of their signal. And the hype is that it does it cleanly without the kind of negative effect of over limiting. It does that, but it does it basically by using clipping and it's slightly more intelligent, slightly more sophisticated than the clipping that's being used in the T-Rex there or hard digital clipping. But at the end of the day, it's still clipping. So first of all, I'll give you a comparison between the analog version of T-Rex and the Slate FGX. So this is T-Rex flavor of clipping. This is Slate. T-Rex, let's go for a slightly smoother setting still. I think that's even closer to the slate. And now let's listen to limiting. And I'm using the isotope ozone limiter here. So clean, limited, slate clipped, digital clipping. So 
I'm going to tell you what I hear when I listen to those. First of all, to me, the clean version sounds best. Has the most punch, has the most bass, has the most impact. I don't particularly, with this beat, like any of the flavours those different types of clipping add. And I'm going to do the same comparison with the other beat in a minute, so you can hear that too. The difference I hear between them is really in terms of punch. For me, the Slate or T-Rex on its kind of softer analogue setting retain the most punch, the most thump in the signal. They do that at the price of distortion, adding different flavours and different amounts of distortion to the signal, but they do keep that weight and that thump, whereas I hear a loss of weight and body in the digitally clipped version and also in the limited version. Digitally clipped version, you're just losing a load of that base information from the waveform. It's being chopped out by the process. And in case of the limiter, that high signal level is being held back and being controlled. So maybe overall the limited version sounds cleanest, but it also loses the most impact in the process. So let me just play that to you again so you can see if you can hear what I mean. Start with clean. Digitally clipped. Analog style clipping. And limited. Now let's do that same comparison with the other beat, which has a cleaner original sound, so it might be easier to hear. So again, we'll start off with it clean. Digital clipping. Lots of unnatural distortion, quite a loss of punch. Analog style clipping. Different kind of distortion, more punch kept in the sound, and then limiting. And back to clean. So there you go. I hope that's interesting. Just to recap, clipping is what happens when you push the signal past a zero in a digital system or an analog system, but we're looking here really at digital audio workstations. Hard digital clipping just slices the tops of the peaks off and gives you this characteristic flat topped waveform so if you see that in a mix down or a master that you're doing you know that's a surefire clue that it's being clipped somewhere and if you didn't intend to do that maybe you should check out where and why it's happening and whether you want it to analog styles of clipping look and sound different You don't get that same hard clipped look. Oh, that's interesting. Look, that's the Slate FGX. And it does have a certain amount of hard clipping in there. It's a kind of blend of the two. And limiting doesn't clip the signal at all, but it does reduce the gain of the signal and therefore suck out quite a bit of the bass and the punch from the signal but it probably gives you a cleaner result. And again, you've got some flattish top looking waveforms there, but they're not as brutal as the digitally clipped versions. Now, of course, in the real world, all of these parameters I'm using have elements you can control, and they give you a lot of influence over the different flavors of clipping that you can get, and that may or may not suit the musical style of what you're trying to work on, depending on whether you're mixing or mastering, on whether you're going for something creative or whether you just want a simple level boost. But I think the final comment to make is if you're just going for level using clipping, 
none of these techniques really make the track sound any louder. They just make it sound more distorted. So they can be a great way of lifting the level of a track cleanly. Maybe I should just show you if I dial these numbers back to 6 dBs instead of 9 dBs. So there's less clipping happening. And then play you. So that's clipped. That's clean. You can have a certain amount of clipping without introducing a great deal of audible distortion and without a great deal of loss of punch and impact. So that can be a useful technique for lifting the level. But it does come at a price and you need to listen out for that distortion and how it's affecting your sound and make sure that you're happy with the end result. So I hope you found that useful and interesting. There's more videos like this on my YouTube channel or come over to the website productionadvice.co.uk for loads more stuff on ways to make your music sound great. Thanks for listening.